Hello and welcome to an extra news broadcast from Crowd1. This is the situation. BBC Africa has been courting Crowd1 for some time regarding an interview. The response has been that Crowd1, of course, wants to participate in any interview. The only reservation from the communication department has been to get the questions in advance so the right experts for each topic can be involved. Just like any professional uh, large company organization or political party, Crowd1 wants to deliver correct and clarifying answers to the media. So, Crowd1 asked for the questions in advance. In return, BBC Africa sent this, a list of questions towards Crowd1 and the company's activities to uh, selected members of the management and some leaders from the network. These are the ones that the representatives from Crowd1 will answer today and give Crowd1 the members transparency that Crowd1 always strives for. To be able to give you the correct answers, I will be joined by three well-known key persons from Crowd1 management. Jonas Erik Werner, co-founder, Johan Westdahl, chief of sales, and Jonathan Ström, chief international expansion. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, Jonas, your feelings about being here in the studio today? Yeah, it's, it's uh, the way we do it. We always uh, uh, want to answer up to, to what we are doing. Uh, and uh, we welcome uh, every media contact because it's in itself uh, an opportunity for us to gain trust and to, to meet our, our public. And of course, uh, there are expectations and uh, they usually happen when media does not really understand what Crowd1 is, uh, what we want and the way we do it. Uh, so I fully understand uh, the complexity uh, of our industry. What Crowd1 does is completely new. Uh, no one has uh, done this uh, before us. And um, we are very unique in the way we are working and we have gathered uh, close to 13 million members already and uh, yeah, in a very, very short period of time. Uh, and uh, of course, this uh, creates a lot of, lot of uh, both interests and also a lot of questions, of course. Uh, and uh, I'm totally aware of, of, of this and we will, as I said before, we will answer to everything. Okay. So let's get started. First question. The BBC has evidence that Crowd1 is making false claims about the products it offers to its members. Crowd1 claims that these are viable, tangible products generating profits for Crowd1 members. But we have evidence that the products offered have been set up to look like real businesses in order to generate hype about Crowd1. Jonathan. Yes, and of course, this is totally wrong. Uh, the fact of the matter is that Crowd1 has a range of different products. So apart from the educational package and the magazine, there are indeed real products. Crowd1 has already launched real products, such as the online travel ag agency, uh, where you can buy um, hotel lights uh, called uh, Life Trends, Life Trends Platinum membership that is unique for Crowd1 members, the security app Safer, and Tribute, who offers lifestyle products. And all our members, they know that there is not, not just one or two, but actually three new major launches that will happen before the end of this year. Uh, we have already started the re record-breaking pre-launch of Mixter. And on the 14th of November, we will go live with Mixter, a mobile gaming platform. In December, we have the Epic Lotto product, and by the end of this year, or beginning of next year, we will launch Mixter Premium, which will include hundreds of cutting-edge mobile games. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, now to, uh, I know we'll get back to Mixter, Mixter Premium and, and uh, Epic One Lotto later in the program. Now, to the next question from BBC Africa letter. The educational packages sold by Crowd1 via Migrate Hub are not genuine products. Crowd1 claims that these packages are provided by third-party partner MyGritHub, but the BBC has evidence that the MyGritHub site was set up by Crowd1. Yuan? Yeah, Crowd1's e-learning package are provided by MyGritHub. The e-learning is based on videos and other forms of education, and it's for the members' own use or to resell. 
In recent months, Crowd1's product development team, together with the representatives from my GritHub, has further developed the current e-learning structure and courses offered. With the focus on education combined with entrepreneurship and e-learning, this has resulted in a new updated design and a new streamlined features that will better reflect the company's global profile and the development of e-learning over the years. The new product will be called Mindo and will include the following courses. Online business development, motivation personal development, rhetorics, the huge world of social media, and the new expanding world of cryptocurrency. All the courses will be produced in 10 different languages. Mind was presented at the event October the 10th and are rolled out right now as we speak. It should be noted that the members who have already purchased the education package will get access for free to all the courses in the new entrepreneurial package, Mindo, but also the old courses from my grid hub. And the service and products will be added on top of the, this e-learning every month that will come new updates on this part. And in addition to this, both magazines and the tickets for the events will be a part of the entrepreneurial package. I think it's even fair to say that we can compare with the Tesla. Uh, the concept, you know, when you buy a new Tesla, the Tesla you bought the first time and driving for the first time is the least powerful and updated version that you will ever have, since it will const constantly develop and improve over time. Okay, so moving on to the next question from the BBC uh, Africa letter. The gambling and mobile gaming sites Afilgo and Mixter are not genuine products. The Mixter and Afilgo websites contain no games that can be played. The BBC has um, also evidence that two of the sports betting companies listed as partners by Afilgo on its website, Premier Bet and SBA, have no partnership deal with Crowd1 or with Afilgo. Jonas. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, uh, Afilgo and Migster are both brands and uh, not companies. Uh, Crowd1 will, through Migster, offer world-class mobile gaming. That's for sure. And uh, as we said before, we are uh, right now in the pre-launch of Migster, a very successful pre-launch. We actually beat all the, all the records in this industry. And, uh, and we will uh, deliver uh, world-class gaming. Uh, and that's actually one of the industries that includes most people on the globe today. And it's growing really rapidly. And this is also a, a very uh, cool business because this is something that people love to do and they do it every day. So you don't need to be a great salesperson. You just, you just talk about uh, things that people already uh, you are using. Yeah, and, and, and please note that we want to make this very clear that, uh, that all uh, of the above uh, mentioned brands and companies are independent legal entities that have uh, invested their own re uh, uh, resources into development uh, in their own uh, prioritary technology. Uh, these are companies that saw Crowd1's network as a great opportunity to market uh, their products uh, via uh, Crowd1's network. Interesting. Let's move on to the next question. <coughs> The BBC has evidence that Crowd1 is making false claims about Epic One Lotto. Epic One Lotto promises its members across the world access to lotteries such as the US's Mega Millions. In fact, Mega Millions tickets are not sold outside the US. And to do so would be in a, a violation of Mega Millions rules. Johan. Crowd1 disputes that it has made any false claims about Epic One Lotto. The initial plan was to launch Epic One Lotto in quarter one this year. As you all know, there was something unpredictable that happened. The COVID-19 pand pandemic hit the world with the full force in the first quarter. And we, as most companies, decided to reverse our strategy. Epic One Lotto operates as a ticket messages service, also known as a ticket career service. 
a solution where third party companies legally purchase lottery tickets locally on behalf of people not located there. With this said, we are not violating any kind of rules or regulations. Thank you, Johan. Next question. Crowd magazine is not a genuine product, but rather a PR exercise for Crowd1. The magazine is not for sale on newsstands in South Africa and only contains puff pieces that promote Crowd1 and its leaders. Further, some of the magazine's content has been plagiarized. Jonas. Yeah, uh, this, this actually shows that, that uh, the journalists uh, has a lot to learn about our business. Uh, yes, of course, it is a PR exercise tool, and we have never said anything else. Uh, it's not for sale at any newsstands anywhere in the world. Uh, it's a magazine uh, for our, our network and our members. It's, it's, it's a tool uh, because we believe that the best way is to combine the new world uh, of internet and technology with the old world that all of us know. Uh, the feeling of have, having the paper in the hands when you show the business and, and a really good way to actually understand the business. So, so that's... That's uh, why we have the, the magazine. And, and uh, for your information and, and for the information to everybody, the content of Crowd1 magazine is, is partly produced by Crowd1, actually most of it, and, and uh, some of it we, we have been purchased. Uh, to state uh, that Crowd1 magazine is, uh, is not a genuine product is nothing but ignorant, actually. Uh, it, uh, it, it is... Ignorant, ignorant to claim uh, that the content in the magazine have been uh, plagiated because the content is from our business and we are the first company doing what we are doing, so there is no one to plagiate from. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's move on to the next question. The BBC has evidence that Crowd1 is making false claims about life trends and safer. Lifetrends is marketed as a booking engine that competes with Booking.com and Expedia, but we have evidence that this is in fact a plug-and-play product built by a third party that simply aggregates data from existing online travel agencies, including Booking.com and Expedia. The Lifetrends logo has then been added to make this look like an original and distinctive product. The same trick has been used with Safer, which is also an app built by um, an existing company onto which the Safer logo has been added. This practice is called white labeling. And we have evidence that this is used to give the appearance of legitimacy. Johan. This is also totally wrong. BBC Africa seems to focus on the technical solution or on the presentation of a product rather than on the actual services that our partners like Safer or Lifetrans provide. We cannot understand the reasons behind this, nor do we understand why a white label solution is deemed as something negative. Mm. If you would do some investigation, white label solution on common worldwide practice, in today's digital world, it has seen as in other industries. If we take Chevrolet, Cadillac, GMC, they are the same cars but sold under three different brands. So, would they, so they would, with this logic, not be real cars or products. Crowd1 disputes the allegations that it should be making false claims about life trends or safer. We are no, there are no false claims whatsoever or regards to life trends and safer. Jonathan, do you have something to add? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, besides the people who are using these products uh, all around the world. Uh, let's talk about Safer first. It is owned by a British company. Uh, they have been using and providing their service for 10 years, uh, tailor-made, uh, but for business to business before. Uh, they, of course, have developed and learned something over these years. And now they have decided to focus on the B2C space instead. Um, they have been working with major companies all around the world, and now it's opened for, for uh, our customers. Uh, Life Trends, on the other side, is an independent US company. Uh, they have developed their own technology as well, offers very comparable prices 
to the Crowd1 members. And that is the sole purpose of the whole product. Thank you, Jonathan. So now let's listen to what Life Trends founder and CEO is saying about this statement. Yeah, so the Life Trends product is a fantastic product. Uh, it is being used globally. Uh, the platform from which it's built has been in uh, service for over five years and spans across many countries around the globe. Um, there are partners um, such as Expedia and Booking.com that supply content as well as about 60 other providers too. So it is an aggregation platform and, um, and I, th I take that as a compliment because this allows us to bring the very best pricing from all of our partners to our Crowd1 members and uh, deliver exceptional value. And just to add to that, when we're talking about a, a white label, uh, you know, here in the United States, you know, myself as a, a company owner, we've used white label products forever. There's nothing wrong with a white label solution. It provides a way for somebody to have access to something they otherwise wouldn't have access to. And again, it doesn't affect the ability to deliver a true value, a true service, a true benefit to the end user. And that's what it's really all about. And, uh, and as far as you know, what we've done with Crowd1, we're very proud to be a part of it because we feel like we're bringing the types of products that are very, very exciting to their, their, their base of members. And we're continuing to expand that. For example, right now, we're looking at a educational curriculum product uh, for all the members of Crowd1, just as we've done with the travel. Again, these products are designed to serve and benefit the members, and they're doing that because it's giving them true value and that's what that's what crowd one's really about. Thank you, Mark and Mike, for your insights on that subject. Uh, comments on the video. Uh, the Life Trend product is is a really uh, really great product. You can actually compare it to to like Hotels.com or whatever. Uh, and we it's important for for journalists and, and and for media to understand that that the product we are launching includes uh, hundreds of thousands of products within the product. So so. Um, uh, we're actually launching more things than any other company in, in our industry have done before us. And we have just started. Thank you for clarifying. Okay, next question. The BBC has evidence that the primary means by which Crowd1 makes money is the recruitment of new members. Johan? Yeah, this is absolutely false information. First of all, it does not cost anything to become a member of Crowd1. And there is also no recurring monthly cost to be a member in Crowd1. Crowd1 do not offer any investment opportunity like when buying stocks, where it's possible to be passive and hope that it, the value will increase. Income for a Crowd1 affiliate partner is based solely on the successful recommendation of products and services. As with any business, the income and success at Crowd1 is not guaranteed, but mainly depends on the efforts and goals of each individual member. It's very simple. We work like most multinational companies with some form of incentive for existing customers to recommend and to attract new customers to them. For instance, offering them discount and other types of beneficial rewards. We have a strong crowd and passionate employees in the company who are all very enthusiastic about the company's vision. Thank you, Johan. Yeah. So moving on to the next question. Our program is also likely to state that Crowd1 has been the subject of investor warnings or has been banned by authorities in Paraguay, New Zealand, the Philippines, Vietnam, Mauritius, Burundi, Namibia, Gabon and Ivory Coast. Financial regulators in South Africa have also issued warnings against Crowd1 and have said they are investigating the company. Jonathan, any comments? Yes, for sure. Uh, this is incorrect. The investor warnings that have been issued are based on incorrect presumptions. As mentioned before by Joan, uh, Crowd1 is not an investment opportunity and is not selling any financial services or products. Crowd1 is merely an online networking company 
that sells third-party products and services. In our terms and conditions, as well as in our back office, it's clearly stated what we are and what we're not. And if someone should communicate about Card One in the wrong way, our compliance team are there to take actions against those ones as well. Thank you, Jonathan. We're getting uh, close to the end, but first, one last question from the BBC Africa letter. Our programme is also likely to include an allegation that Crowd1 is deliberately targeting people in low- and middle-income countries, including many people who are poor and living in desperate circumstances. The report points out that the money invested by these poor people has contributed to the extravagant personal wealth displayed by Crowd1's leaders. Jonathan? Of course, this is not true. Uh, Crowd1 is a global online networking company. Uh, we are operating uh, over the borders in different cultures. We're giving people the platform and the opportunity to uh, create a long-term and sustainable business. Uh, there are no adjustments in the compensation plan for any country or region. It is equal where you live and where you work, globally. Uh, we address and reward all our members the same regardless of their nationality or ethnic backgrounds. Okay, thank you for clarifying and answering these questions. Thank you all for watching. I think that's a wrap and I uh, hope to see you very soon again.